Welcome to the UQ School of Architecture Architectural Technology Presentations. In this video we will discuss the concept of value and how cost inputs at the beginning of a project derive value over the life of the asset. When it comes to determining value, taking a short-term view misses out on potentially massive gains to an organisation that can be affected by the built environment. Looking at the organisation costs as a whole rather than looking at the building costs in isolation changes the perspective on the value that good design can deliver to an organisation. In determining value in a proposition in relation to cost, firstly we need to ask ourselves over what time frame is the value to be determined. The longer the project cycle then the value proposition changes as higher upfront costs investing in more durable finishes or greater energy efficiency will produce savings over a longer time frame. Increasingly though, the other part of the equation is what the market expectation will be for the product. Commercial building developers are becoming more sophisticated with their product as organisations demand greater levels of environmental performance and organisational strategies that focus on collaboration transparency and employee wellness. The buildings that developers provide therefore must respond to these demands so that their product is leased and commands a premium return. Over the lifetime of a project the total proportion of total cost is tied up in the operation of the building over its lifetime. Land, finance, consultants and construction costs are small in comparison to these longer term outflows. For the total cost of an organisation though, their greatest cost is the cost of human capital. The knowledge economy runs on human capital and this cost alone far outweighs the cost of a building and running the building that they occupy. Therefore, in determining the overall cost to an organisation, we would need to find ways to make the human capital more effective and more productive. Contemporary office design is increasingly taking a people first approach in the design of their spaces as many see wellness as both a way of attracting the best talent as well as keeping people healthy and thus more productive. This idea of healthy heart and healthy mind is summed up by the World Health Organization's definition of wellness which is defined as a state of complete physical, mental and social well-being and not merely the absence of disease and infirmity. Elements in the space that promote wellness are things that bring us closer to nature. These specifically are greater levels of fresh air and access to nature through plants and other vegetation. Research varies widely on the benefits of these moves, but the consensus is that there are verifiable benefits that translate into tangible outcomes for that organisation, which in turn can be monetized, enabling those organisations to count them in their value management exercises. Therefore, we need to make the case to developers and client organisations of the tangible benefits of higher standards of environmental performance through the application of value benefits over a longer period of time. We also need to contextualise the benefits of investing in the materials and technologies that deliver these benefits as there is an increasing body of evidence that the benefits to well-being translate to smarter, happier and healthy workforces. That's the end of this presentation on whole of project solutions. Please check in to other presentations in the series and thanks for watching.